Good afternoon, YouTube. Welcome to Fairy Face Tail Productions. So today we're doing kind of an update of the GPX Moto bikes. So a little while ago, Beaker Extreme and I started a company called a and Moto Toys. We do dirt bike rentals for the time being, and we bought four GPX Moto dirt bikes. We bought the uh, 250E, two 300Rs, and a 450R, all four strokes. And so far we've had really good luck with them. We haven't had any major problems. But what I would like to talk about is a little bit of uh, some of the annoyances and issues that we have had, because no bike is obviously perfect, and we'll kind of talk to that. So first, I'll start out with all of the downsides and negatives that we found with these dirt bikes. Because, of course, everybody wants to know what's terrible about the Chinese dirt bikes, and we'll just start off there. So the first issues that we have, or have really kind of struggled with, is the 450R. Now the 450R is honestly, it came in its crate, I'm not going to say broken, but it came loose in the crate and it broke the forks. So God knows what other problems that may have caused from shipping or whatever else. It's the only one of the bikes that we ordered that came loose in its crate. And GPX Moto was absolutely awesome. They sent us new forks uh, since those ones they got damaged, no questions asked really. So that, that was great. But as time goes on, we had one of the intake boots crack, um, or the intake boot, I should say, caused all kinds of weird running issues. Of course, you know, you're sucking in extra air, it's not gonna run right, and that's just kinda how that goes. Now, GPX did send a updated boot where they changed it to being a uh, metal aluminum type boot that had uh, rubber seals on either side, so it didn't crack again. And it also changed the angle to make it line up a little bit easier than I think the stock one was kind of, uh, set to be. So it's pretty cool that they had uh, updated the design as well as uh, supported their product. Now the next issue that we really have with the 450 is just how it, how it comes tuned from the factory. I think it's really subpar. The bike runs so lean, the lean popping is almost unbearable on D-Cell. It's absolutely insane. And then on top of that, for a 450, I, we were a little bit disappointed, I think, in the power. Um, I, just, uh, I just really haven't been super happy or comfortable with that bike. Uh, when we rent it, the renters seem to like it. They do kind of comment that it's not as powerful as other 450s. And that's okay. Like, it, I was more going for, like, the torquiness and usable power versus, like, a race 450. But uh, even then, I feel like the tuning is just very bad. Now, from the factory, a lot of bikes do come with very lean tuning. And I understand this, but uh, the 450 takes that to a whole new level. And there's tunes out there. I believe it is Ethan on Facebook. He offers some tunes for the uh, the 450, and that solves a lot of those issues. But understanding that we have you know six or seven rentals now, and we have to maintain and work on all these bikes, having to do special modifications to each one takes a lot of time. So um, yeah, it's kind of kind of difficult. And on top of that, I think the disappointment is um, we like to present these bikes in a stock format because. When people rent one of these, they want to know, um, you know, what they're getting out of the box, and if they buy one, how it's going to feel. So we try to keep them as stock as possible. And I feel like with the 450, that's probably not going to work in the long run. We're probably going to tune it, and um, I actually kind of, kind of don't like that. My next real big gripe is going to be the 250E, um, and it's very hard to gripe about the 250E. This little bike right here uh, for four thousand dollars. There is no bike in its budget that can compete with it. I, it's just not. It's got a fantastic suspension. The motor is very torquey. Uh, overall, it, it's a really good package for the money. Uh, my biggest complaint is the carburetor. So the carburetor that it comes with is very usable. Don't uh, mistake me. Once you get it uh, dialed, the jetting correct, as well as uh, you know your your good baseline for the fuel screw or mixture screw or whatever you want to call it. Um, it's a pretty good bike and it runs pretty well. Although there's just some spots in the carburation and you can just tell that the carburetor's cheap, um, to be expected if I'm honest. Now there's a replacement part out there which is the Nibby Racing Carb, which uh, I guess has more atomization holes for the fuel coming into the engine. Uh, pretty much everybody says that it solves the majority of the problems, the, the sometimes stumbling, the really pickiness about having the mixture screw absolutely perfect. So those are all the issues I have with the bike. Uh, every time I rent this bike, I have to <laughs> make sure I warm it, real, warm it up real good in the morning and then get the, uh, the mixture screw set just perfectly along with the idle screw, uh, just, just to make sure the customers have a good experience. Of course, I don't want anybody to you know, not be able to start it or whatever else. It's just uh, this bike absolutely have to do that and that's pretty annoying. Uh, easy to work around though. The, the replacement Nibby Racing Carb, I believe is only like $70 on Amazon. So. 
Uh, not a huge deal, but kind of like I said on the others, and, and, and we get comments on some of our posts that, hey, why don't you just change the carb out? Well, you're right, it's not really that difficult of a task, but when I've got six or seven bikes to constantly be doing stuff to, uh, finding the time and then allotting the money to do that, it, it's just more of a process for us. The other uh, thing I'll mention about the 250 right quick is the chain that it comes with. The stock chain stretched real bad. Uh, I still have it on there. I've got it adjusted about as probably as far as I'll go for the time being, but the chain, for whatever reason, is it's got to be a lower quality than the 300s and the, and the 450s, but uh, it stretched real bad real quickly. You know, it's not a big deal. Some things like that will come cheaper on bikes, so I'm not, uh, not going to cry about it, but that is one thing that uh, I was annoyed with. Um, another thing that's not so much a problem as it is just a, a, a you know, FYI, maybe, is the 300R, uh, the, the stock shifter, not a fan of that one. The stock shifter was made for a garden home. I would imagine you have to have five, size five or six boots to like <laughs> make sure that that works. I don't know. Was well, not a fan, but a Tusk shifter that's like $20 fit on the, the bikes just fine. So not a big deal right there. And really, like that's all I can think of off the top of my head that we've really had some, some major issues or problems with the GPX bikes. We've had no major engine malfunctions or anything else, and I even drowned my 300R. It's got submerged all the way under, and uh, after I cleared it out and flushed the engine real good, it's been running fine. Uh, no perceivable power loss or anything like that. Uh, I don't know. I mean, the, the, we haven't had any major problems, and the bikes have been rented several times. People are hard on them. In fact, we had some guys from the Netherlands military that were in town, and uh, they wanted to, of course, explore Colorado. That's what we're here for. Uh, they were probably the hardest on the bikes I've seen so far. Uh, they came back, you know, they were obviously dropped a few times, scratched up. You could tell they were brushing through the trees and whatnot. Uh, they were just, uh, they were riding them hard. And I got no problems with that so long as they're not ripping plastics and stuff like that off. But um, I guess my point is, is that they've been reliable through us riding them as well as customers. We've had nobody, we haven't had to refund anybody because one of these bikes is broken. Now let's talk about some of the things that the customers have really liked uh, so far on the bikes. So uh, we've had kind of a mix of people wanting a, a really cheap rental because we are the cheapest in town versus people renting specific GPX bikes because they're looking to buy one and they want to try it out first. By far the 300R has been probably the most popular is in the sense of people like this bike for everything that it is. Uh, fuel injected, it's a 300cc motor that makes really good torque and power for its size. Um, the suspension and weight it is all very good and it's better than competitors like the KLX 300. And I know, I know, it's a Japanese bike, it's supposedly supposed to be the god of all things, but um, I, I also believe that this bike is a way better value uh, than the KLX 300. Now the KLX 300 might be a little bit better when it comes to street use only because of gearing, but gearing is something that you can change easy enough. So this bike I think offers a lot more performance and not only uh, the engine, but both the suspension front and rear is so much better and adjustable than the KLX 300. So a lot of people come over and try this bike out because they wanna know, is it better? Is it something that I wanna buy, et cetera. Overwhelmingly, we've had even we've even had a few people that have bought bikes right after renting from us, and that's the kind of stuff that we like to see. I, I don't want to paint a picture where GPX is the most perfect manufacturer; they're going to take over the world because I don't think that's the case. But these are good bikes for the, for the money, and that's what I'm here for. Because at the end of the day, when it comes to, to buying a DRZ 400, a KLX 300, or any of these bikes. Uh, I always feel the Japanese dual sports are lackluster these days. They offer subpar performance for the money. And that's kind of how I ended up looking at these bikes. And I think a lot of people have too. And, and being able to offer them for people to rent and try them out, I think is pretty fantastic. Um, the 250E, I think the biggest uh, complaints, I guess, if you will, is not having enough power. Now keep in mind, I live in Colorado. Most of our riding is done probably above 8,000 feet altitude. So, and a lot of our, we've taken the, the 250E all the way up to 14,000 feet. And yes, the, the 250E, as it gets up higher elevations, is pretty anemic on power, but it is lighter. There's less mass up top on the bike, and it, it's a very flickable, controllable bike. And the suspension just, uh, I think because it has less weight, feels uh, a little bit more responsive, if you will, than the 450 and the 300. Maybe that's in my head. I don't know. 
Nonetheless, it's a great platform, and the only real complaints that we get is sometimes people just want more power out of the 250. And uh, at $105 a day, I don't think most people are upset about it. They're getting a 250. <laughs> at the end of the day, like there's no replacement for displacement. And you know, as a whole, that's what AMM Moto Toys was for, was to be a more cost-effective option to be able to rent dirt bikes locally, whether you're coming out of town, you're getting back into the sport, uh, wh whatever it may be, we wanted to offer bikes that you can rent that don't break the bank and you can still have a really good time uh, on them. You know, we're not trying to, to buy cheap bikes for the sake of buy buying cheap bikes as much as we are giving value to people for what they're paying for. And we've had no disappointed customers. We've had no bikes break down, kind of like I said earlier. And that's kind of where we are with the GPX Moto bikes. Now, I kind of want to hit this again because I'm starting to feel like I'm a shill for GPX Moto. Uh, we bought all these bikes. They were not given to us. So uh, we purchased, well, I guess total, we've purchased five GPX Moto bikes at this point. Out of our own money, we, we invested in their, in their bikes to start our company, and that has turned out quite well. Now, as you can see, uh, I'm sure you at least see my Riehu in the image here. We have other bikes. We do rent the Riehu, my Beta 390 back there. Um, you know, we're not just a Chinese bike shield here. That's not what we're here to be. And I don't want people to misunderstand that I am saying that a GPX Moto is the same quality as a KTM. It, it isn't. At the end of the day, these are six or $7,000 bikes, maybe even $4,000 bikes. And the price does reflect that. Um, I think my biggest point that I want to get across about GPX is for what you're paying for at that $6,000 price point, you're getting a lot for your money and it's reliable from a company that supports their products. What you're not getting is a $13,000 KTM. You're not paying that and you're not getting that. That's really what it comes down to. If you want a top tier Enduro that matches up to the $13,000, $12,000 Huskies and KTMs, then the Riehu back here is more of your answer where it's sitting in the $10,000 range. Um, so I just don't want to mislead people. I want people to understand that these are more what I would consider in the line of budget dual sports and they're a good value and they're really fun for people who like to trail ride. These bikes are such good trail riders. The, the 250E back here, most gets compared to the old XR250R just because it's just such a torquey beast that is consistent and will climb up anything, has a real good suspension. And, and that, at the end of the day, a lot of us trail riders, that's all we want. We don't need all the farkles. We're not gonna race. We're not gonna, we don't need a top tier suspension that's gonna break our bones every time we go over something. So that's kind of where I'm at with GPX Moto and what I want to impress on you guys. Some people have gotten the idea that I have been, uh, we have been comparing these to race bikes, uh, that these are, are better in some way or another. And that's, that's not where we're coming from. We're looking for, for uh, good bang for your buck, if you will. Well, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Uh, I really wanted to make a video about this and kind of update how we're doing with GPX Moto Bikes. And as time goes on, we'll keep updating on what things break or what issues we have. And we just want to kind of be pretty transparent about these bikes as we go along with our rentals. Thanks for watching. Ferret Face out.